Hey, I'm RC and this is the episode 2 about creating an interface for an HTML5 video game. So in the last episode we covered the different HTML elements, so the spawn, the div, button, links, canvas, etc. I also covered a little bit about the styling, which is the most important part with HTML. So I talked about the different ways to style the text, so there they are. And in this video, what I will do is I will continue um, explaining stuff with the styling and I will also cover positioning, which is very tricky in HTML. So another very common style you will be using is the border. This can be applied to any HTML element. So um, it's the size of the border, then the type of the line, 99% of the time it's going to be solid and then the color. So make sure to put um, the type of line to solid because this will not work and will do nothing. So put the solid. Um, after that, there is the background. So the background can be two things. It can be either a color, for example, green, or it can be an image with URL and then you specify the image. So this can be applied to div, buttons, canvas and image. Okay, so now let's talk about how to resize elements. So one very important thing to understand first is how the hierarchy works. So um, you've got a parent, which is most of the time a div, so a container, and the parent can have one or multiple children. For example, right there I got two um, children, so that one and that one, and that children, so that child has two children. So this one and that one. And those could also have multiple children. It can go forever pretty much. And this is a very important thing to understand when working with the size, and eventually we will work with positioning. So it's very important. Okay, so when working with the size, there are three main options. So the first one is to simply tell how big the content is with absolute value. So um, normally it's not recommended, but it would work, obviously. So you can say, hey, my width is 100px. So this only works for containers, so div, button, canvases, and um, images. So don't try to do that with regular text, it will not work. Regular text, the size of a regular text always match the content. I will cover that very soon. So you can either say um, in PX or you can say that in percentage. So it takes the full page. Now the trick part comes with the auto. So by default, an HTML element has the width set to auto. And when it's auto, it depends on the type it is. So if it's a div, it's going to be 100%. So try to fill the wall page and for the rest, so if it's a button, etc., the size will match the content. And um, if you want your container to match the content, you cannot do that with simply white and height. You will need to change the display, so say display inline block. So right there, I got three examples. Okay, so I put the example in the new page, and this is how it looks. So first, we got um, the first hello. So um, the div should take the full page because it has nothing that changes its, um, its size. So as you can see, the first div takes the full page and the, the hello over there only, um, because it's a link, so it's not a div, its size matched the content. So it matched the, the, the border matched the hello. After that, we got the div that takes a full place. So there we are. And then we got the other div but this time it has display inline block. And what it does, if we inspect that element, is that um, it actually matched the content, so it's pretty tiny. Okay, so now I'll try my best to explain the positioning. So uh, like the sizing, positioning can only be applied to containers, buttons, canvas, and image. If you want to reposition a simple text, you simply put it inside a container and then you reposition the container. So you never apply special positioning on regular text or regular spawn normally. So there are two different ways you want to position something. The first one is if you want to position it relative to its normal position. In that case, it's very easy. You simply work with margin left and margin top. So if the margin left is, let's say, 10px, the element will be 10px more to the right than it should be. Basically, it adds a little spacer between the element and its left side. If you want it to be a little bit at the bottom of where it should be, you simply add margin top. So it adds a little margin to the top and it's going to be 10px down. Now, if you want to position an element relative to its parents, top left corner, this is how you do it. So the element you want to move, you say the position is absolute 
Then you specify the top left and um, the top and the left parameters. Um, so this will be the distance from the top left corner of the parent. If you do that, you must make sure that the parent is also absolute position. If you simply put absolute position with no top and left, nothing is going to happen, but it can be used um, for positioning of the children. It will be easier when I will come up with the example. And finally, if you want to place two containers next to each other, so two divs, you put float left. You put that on both, so it's not float left and float right. You can do that as well, but put float left on both of them. It's a bit weird, but it works. Okay, so let's say that I want a big container. So 500 PX by 500 PX. So it would be with 500, I, well, 500, I save it, and this is how it looks. So we got indeed a big box. Now let's say that I would want the box to be a bit more down right. In order to do that, I would want to reposition the, the box relative to its normal place. So relative to here, so I would simply use margin. So let's say margin equal, well, margin left is 100 and margin top is 100. So if I refresh, I will be 100, 100 away from the default position. Now let's put it back to 10 and there we go. Okay, so now let's say that I want to add another container. That time it's going to be a bit smaller. So it's going to be 300 px and 300 px, and it will be inside the main one. So if I save and check over there, there we go. So by default, it's going to be in the top left corner of the screen. If I want to um, place it a little bit down left or down or whatever, relative to its default position, I'm going to do exactly the same thing than here. I'm going to use margin left and margin top. So there we go, we got the new positioning. Okay, so now let's add another container. This time it will be a red container and it will be right below the, the other one we just placed. So there we have it. So we got the big one, the other one, and then the red one. If we want to place it, let's say, a bit more to the right relative to its normal position, we would use the same thing than before. So with margin left, 20px, let's say 20px, refresh, and there we have it. Okay, so now let's say that we want to place that red rectangle inside the other rectangle. So the first thing to do is, um, well, the method we will use is the absolute positioning. Every time you want two elements to be on top of each other, you're going to use absolute positioning. So let's do that. So position absolute. There we go. If you only do that, nothing will change. Because if you don't specify a top and a left, the position absolute does nothing. Uh, next up, we are going to specify the top and uh, the left. So if we simply say a, let's say top is five and then left is five, this is going to be uh, relative to the top left corner of the parent with a position absolute. In that case, there is no parent with um, the position absolute, so it's going to be the whole page. So it's going to be 10 px, relative to the, the wall page. But if I want the 5.5 five to be relative to, let's say, the this corner, so the bigger rectangle, then I can add a absolute positioning on this one. So if I do that, then the um, parent, which has position absolute, will be this one instead of the, the wall page. So I'm going to be 5.5px five, five away from the top left corner of this one because it has position absolute. So there we go. So 5px from that one. So yeah, as you can see, things can get a little bit complex. One thing to know though, is that if I take this part and I place it inside this one, so um, there's the bigger, the bigger one, there's the other one, and then inside it, there will be the reg rectangle. You would think that it would change the layout, but if we save and check it, it's exactly the same. And that's because this one will be position um, relative to the parent with the absolute position. Because this one does not have a position absolute, it's just not going to be considered in the positioning. So it checks, A, hey, does my first parent has position absolute? No, let's go one step ahead. Oh, this one has position absolute. Let place myself 5px, 5px away from the top left corner of that parents. So this is how it works. 
Okay, so now if we remove the top and the left, like we said earlier, a position absolute without the top and the left does absolutely nothing. So if we refresh, it's going to be in its default position. And if we put a top left without a position absolute, it's also going to do absolutely nothing. So there we go. Now, if we would want those two boxes to be next to each other, so one to the left and one to the right, what we are going to use is the float attribute. Um, so let's remove this. Let's put float left, float left here, place that over here. And we need to make sure that they can fit into the parent. So now it's 200px, 300px, 500, but we got the margin. So let's just make this one a bit smaller, refresh, and there we have it. We would have the two elements next to each other. So I guess that will be pretty much it about this video. I hope you liked it. And don't forget to check out the next episode by clicking the annotation on the screen. See ya.